<clears throat> okay, so as you can see, we decided to do the Heineken Inspector campaign for the most recent 2015 James Bond film. So, why did we choose this campaign? Well, we're all big fans of Heineken and the James Bond franchise, and we thought this would be a great collaboration for us all to do as a group, as we both are all big fans of these two brands. Um, we believe that the campaign itself used a big variety of interesting media channels, which is integrated over three main areas. And it's a very new recent campaign, it's only just came out within the last few months and we decided to do it since it's still relevant in people's minds. And it's a very innovative collaboration between the two brands as they've had a partnership since 1997 and we decided this time Anakin have really went out of their way to make it more innovative this time round. So a bit about the campaign, it was released on the 21st of September 2015 ahead of the new Spectre James Bond film. Heineken and James Bond have had an association for many years, as Alex said, since 1997. However, this is going to be their biggest and best campaign yet. They spent £64 million producing the campaign, which is quite a lot of money. The campaign itself was made of three integral parts. Heineken first released a TV commercial onto YouTube, Facebook and film theatres. Then a social media competition through Facebook and Instagram, as well as producing Spectre-themed Heineken bottles. Okay, so the commercial itself is produced by Wyman and Kennedy, who are an independent advertising agency. And as mentioned before, it was released to social media and to fears worldwide, and it ran in 30, 60, and 90 second intervals. The campaign itself is the only one to feature Daniel Craig in any of their advertisements. So, why did they choose Bond, and what's the messaging behind having Bond himself? We believe that Bond represents a, a very, Bond is a very small, sophisticated, classy individual. We believe that Heineken chose to decide to have Daniel Craig as his actor, as they believe that Heineken will end up adopting the semiotics of what Bond represents, and people must view Heineken as a premium blogger. They also featured a female actor in the commercial, which Heineken don't usually do. Her name is Zora Prasino. Um, so as you can see, that she featured in the advert, she had enough screen, as much screen time as Bond did. We believe that. This was done by Heineken to promote gender equality in their advertisements, as gender equality is quite a big issue in today's society. Um, Daniel Craig, the actor himself, would even agree with this to some extent, because they, he believes that Daniel Craig, in a recent interview with Red Bulletin, he mentioned that Bond was a sexist misogynist, therefore arguing that Bond may not, therefore arguing that Bond may not necessarily be the best uh, character to promote your products by. Head of sponsorship for Heineken would also agree with this, as he posted a recent statement recently saying, Man of the world, why not woman of the world? So he decided to feature a new female actor in the scene, perhaps to promote their product to more female consumers. <coughs> okay, so when it comes to evaluating the Chase commercial, we decided to look at how many views that the commercial actually got, because that's an immediate response of how successful it may have been. So on YouTube, the video received 2.7 million views.
views. It was shared almost 5,000 times and it gained the Heineken YouTube channel 223 subscriptions. Um, this video is the most viewed Heineken video they have actually uploaded onto their YouTube, which argues that it was relatively successful. Okay, so on Facebook, the commercial received just under 500,000 views and it was liked just under 2,000 times. However, we argue this wasn't very substantial as their Facebook page has over 19 million likes. Perhaps they did not promote it enough before. Um, the commercial, we thought, could have featured more Heineken imagery as throughout the commercial, as you've just seen, the Heineken bottle is only featured maybe two or three times throughout. So we feel that this isn't enough to build brand awareness. Heineken could have went out of their way by including more Heineken imagery, such as uh, a Heineken pint colour at the bar perhaps, more Heineken bottles in the wedding scene, Heineken towels. We just don't think Heineken really went out of the way to build brand awareness. Another good point that we thought about the advert is that is this a Heineken, is this a Heineken advert after all or is it a James Bond advert? As mentioned before, the lack of Heineken imagery may suggest that the James Bond film may be overshadowing the Heineken brand throughout. So yeah. When looking at Belvedere's advert, which also has an affiliation with the James Bond franchise, you can see out throughout which is their advert, which we're going to show you in a moment, is that they have a lot of Belvedere imagery. It's set in a bar, you see the product throughout, you really get a sense of who's trying to sell the product what the product actually is, unlike the Heineken Abbott, which we just watched. Belvedere Martini. Of course. Shaken, not stirred. Excellent choice, Mr. Bond. The digital aspect of the Spectre campaign, Heineken launched a competition with a short YouTube video which we'll show you now. The Deimos 2 satellite will come into alignment. T minus two minutes, one minute and counting. All units on the ground depart for the Spifey site immediately. Minus 10 seconds and counting. 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. Everyone, please focus. 1. Spiky image and visualize. Congratulations, everyone. And cheers. Our spiky has been successfully initialized. You've made history. The competition was accessible to entrants using social media platforms, Instagram and Facebook. Collaborating with Europe the Cast Satellite, Heineken offered competition winners the chance to be involved in a world's first a selfie from space. To win, competitors would have to post an image to Instagram or Facebook relating what they would take on the spy for mission with the hashtag spy for you. The selfie itself took place in Las Vegas' Hoover Dam, where 200 competition winners also received two complimentary nights stay in a hotel with runners up receiving Spectre themed Heineken merchandise. When evaluating this section of the campaign, we looked at consumer involvement. On Instagram, over 3,000 people used the Spikey hashtag, therefore arguing the competition was moderately successful as Heineken has only 42,000 followers. However, compared to Facebook, where the competition did not receive much attention, but this may be due to the use of the hashtag, which to Facebook is relatively new, or perhaps the competition was not exposed enough through Facebook. 
Other than evaluating the statistics, the group thought this aspect of the campaign was very innovative as Heineken has taken on the challenge of a world's first for self in space. We felt this was a very clever way to increase involvement and participation, as not only does it link to the James Bond theme of surveillance and technology, but it also ties in with today's modern culture of self-photography, also known as selfies. So the third part of the Heineken Spectre campaign was the release of 500 million limited edition Spectre theme bottles. The, these advertised the movie uh, very successfully, as well as obviously being Heineken products themselves. The, the concept of this, this part of the campaign was that the consumer takes a photo of the logo on these limited edition bottles and uploads it slash scans it onto the Heineken Bond website. This in turn unlocks, uh, unlocks exclusive content and footage uh, shown behind, behind the scenes um, exclusive features from the Spectre, Spectre movie. Uh, it equally advertises, like I said, the James Bond movie as well as being um, generating income for Heineken as a, as a company. So in terms of the evaluation for this part of the campaign, uh, it's a strong way to, to raise awareness and identity as, as the limited edition bottles are, are unique um, and it's, it's not a usual Heineken product, uh, so it encourages people to want to buy. Um, is it needed though? Because some Heineken users might feel that they're not, they're not interested in James Bond and it could just cause confusion when, when purchasing the product. Now, unlike the Chase advert and the Spy parts of the campaign, it is difficult to directly measure the response from this aspect of the campaign. However, this figure from Heineken's third quarter sales uh, does show that the ten percent increase within Europe uh, has occurred in the, like, in the last few months, which was when this this uh, campaign was released. So, when deciding which model to use for the James Bond Spectre campaign, we decided to go with Schwab's model. The sender, which is Heineken. When we're looking at the encoding side of it, this is pretty much attached to the ideals and classifications around the James Bond persona and transferring them to the Heineken logo or Heineken's philosophy. The message itself which is being communicated by Heineken is pretty much, if Heineken is good enough for James Bond, it's good enough for the average consumer. And the media channels that we use is spread over three parts. There is the competition which featured on social media, the commercial which was also featured on social media, and the physical presence of the bottle being on the shelves in the super supermarkets and bar tops. Decoding is pretty much the process of people, consumers and viewers who see this material in the campaign and getting their thoughts and perspective on what the message is actually trying to communicate. Whether that, if Heineken is being promoted as a premium brand or if they don't like the campaign at all entirely. The receivers that are mainly receiving the communication from Heineken is mainly which we argue to be 18 to 50 year old males. However, for the commercial part of the actual campaign, we believe that Heineken made an attempt to broaden that horizon to female consumers too, with the presence of Zara Prasinov. Um, so the response and feedback part of the model which we try to fit into the Heineken campaign, the overall response that Heineken would hope for is a boost in sales. But however, a more immediate response and a more measurable response which you can take note of would be the views, shares, likes and comments which the commercials and also the posts about the competition received on social media. The feedback, again, could just be comments that are featured on these posts, whether people liked it, how, how, how many times people got involved with it too. However, the noise aspect of the model, we think, is pretty much some people may be miss, um, some people may see the campaign as promoting the film more than Hanukkah itself. So therefore, going out to the OC the film instead of actually buying the Hanukkah products itself. The campaign analytics part of our evaluation, deep global trends show the correlation between how many times the terms Hanukkah and Inspector have been searched. This information shows that there was a slight increase towards the end of September, perhaps when the campaign began causing this impact. As well as multiple increases throughout October in both search terms, closer to the time that the film was released. However, due to the fact there is a low amount of times the two terms have been searched together at high volume, comes to the conclusion that the collaboration between the two brands was not highly exposed. Alexa, a web analytics site, shows the data for Heineken's recent web traffic over uh, the last few months. Uh, although it doesn't show too much information, it does show that there's been a 17% increase in the last few months, which we feel could be directed to the campaign. So, for the overall evaluation and summary of this campaign, we decided to look at some good points to begin with. As mentioned throughout, it's a very innovative campaign. Heineken have really went out their way this time to make it interesting. 
Uh, the Chase advert, as previously mentioned, uh, is the only advertisement to feature Daniel Craig this year. And it's, as I've said before, it's a very unique competition. Heineken have made history by taking the world's first ever selfie from space using the other cast satellite Desmos. Um, we believe that the product that they actually have on the shelves is very well designed. We also believe that Heineken have taken a responsible approach to using the James Bond persona, not to ruin the imagery of James Bond being a martini drinker, replacing martini for Heineken, which he has definitely not done. And overall, 10% sales growth in Europe for Heineken in the third quarter of 2015. Although this campaign only initially started towards the end of September, we do feel that it would have had an impact on these sales. Um, so on the other hand, um, we felt the campaign did have its downsides. Uh, first of all, we think that the campaign wasn't actually exposed to its full potential as shares and kind of um, likes on, on social media sites were quite limited over the campaign period. Uh, also, in terms of the timing, uh, the Rugby World Cup 2015, uh, which also Heineken advertised within, did run at the same time, so we feel like this could have taken away uh, Spectre's limelight. It also could be argued that the Spectre film was actually promoted more than Heineken as a brand uh, throughout this campaign, as a lot of the focus we felt was on James Bond, perhaps more than Heineken as a company. Uh, 